This program is made possible by American Senior Benefits Wichita is all about your peace of mind. We specialize in asset protecting, safeguarding your health, planning your estate, and preserving your freedom of choice. We're here to work through all of this with you. American Senior Benefits Wichita proudly supports PBS Kansas. The Candle Club, a place where friends, food, and music come together. Currently, we offer live entertainment every night except Sundays. Enjoy our delicious specialty appetizers and the Candle Club Signature Prime Rib. More about upcoming events at CandleClubWichita.com. Home Health and Hospice of Kansas is a locally owned and community-based provider. We offer quality health care to our patients and families complete with love, warmth, and compassion. We'll take care of all of the details for you. More information at KansasHomeHealth.com. Welcome to Cedric Plaza Retirement Community. Our living options are designed to suit your specific needs and activities that you're sure to love. We believe you'll be able to see yourself here enjoying time with friends and family. For more information, CedricPlaza.org. Welcome to Empowering Seniors. I'm Katherine Ambrose, and on this episode, we're talking about transitional moves. We're covering everything from downsizing out of your first home into an apartment to active adult living. And I'm here with Sharon Clark. Sharon, welcome to the show. Thank you. So Sharon, I understand that this is your second move. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your history and your first downsizing move. Well, I was alone for uh, about three years after my husband passed away, and uh, my daughter encouraged me to move out to somewhere where I could be more active. Uh, after I was depressed, and after a you know a long time of just sitting around and watching TV, well, I decided that. Uh, I needed to do something that had, you know, got me more active, and so uh, we went looking for a uh, independent living senior facility, and um, I had a dog, and so I wanted him to have the best that he could have and still be in an apartment. Uh, the first one we found was uh, was more adaptable to his to his uh, activity and I could go out my front door and let him out in the yard and didn't have to do any stairs or elevators or anything like that and that was a that's very appealing and uh, I was there a year and a half and uh, he got along well and I got along well uh, but uh, some of the the facilities were questionable, so we went looking for another place, and uh, some place that would still take Rowdy, my puppy. Um, I got a place on the first floor because that was important to me to not have to go down the elevator to get him outside, mm -hmm. and um, the downsizing was horrible. <laughs> I. <laughs> Uh, we were we were kind of collectible people, and and it, we had so much stuff, so much stuff, and so that was the first downsizing was from to the first house, and then the second downsizing was uh, packing that up and going to another place, mm -hmm. and it was uh, it it just continued, and I'm still doing it. I'm still, I'm still going through things mm -hmm. and getting rid of things and uh, giving away things <laughs> and throwing away things because it just doesn't stop, especially when, you know, you've been married uh, all those years and, and collected all, both of you collect all those things. And uh, finally, the, you know, the bottom line is Family's more important than things. Mm -hmm. And so my greatest uh, joy is having two great grandbabies now. And that's what's important, that being able to get together with them, be able to see them, 
the COVID plan was not uh, conducive with that and and still is, is questionable, but right now we're getting to move out into having uh, family gatherings and that kind of thing. And so I'm, I'm doing a little better and not quite so depressed. <laughs> so Sharon, you had a lot of help from your family. Do you feel like very many people have that kind of help? In my, in my two different places where I've lived, it has been really sad for me to learn stories about people who have no one. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that's, that's more true than not true because even if they have families, the families don't want to help or the families are absent or the families live in another state. So what would you tell some of those people that might be watching the show that don't have that kind of help? What kind of advice would you give to them? I, I'm one that has to say, do it yourself. But I know that's really hard for some people. So uh, I would check with, uh, with uh, the director of different facilities and mm -hmm. say, you know, I, I don't have any help to help me find out this this information, will you help me? And they would be glad to, I'm sure. And I'm sure they would here, but I'm sure they would at any other facility because that's their job and they want to find help for their seniors. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here with Debbie Shirky. And Debbie, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And you've helped your mother downsize twice now. Twice, yes. Quite, uh, quite the adventures, we should say. Okay, so what prompted a downsizing move for your mother? Well, um, my stepdad died in 2016, and mom had been by herself then for about two and a half years. And she was bored, lonely, um, wasn't always eating the best. And so we just started talking about, you know, if we go find some place that has activities and things to do and they could help you with some meals. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what prompted it was just mostly the community, but also a little bit of help with um, food and diet and stuff like that. By community, were you hoping that she'd make friends? Friends, and we understood, I hadn't done a lot of investigating at that point, but we understood that most of the communities, the senior communities have, you know, different things going on and activities. And so I began researching that and found out that to be true. And, and we started visiting and going to different facilities. It was very important to her. She has a dog and, or had a dog, mm -hmm. and um, she wanted to be sure that they would accept her pets. And many of them do accept pets, we found out. And so we found a location that we thought was going to work for her. And we began the packing and the boxing and the giving away. And oh my goodness, it's a lot. But it's so worth it because it was something that was going to make her life better. And how was the process? Like shopping together and going through things at the house? Was that I would imagine that's a very memorable experience uh, in yeah, different times yeah. you had with your mom. Yeah, it was. We, we had a good time. We also had some, it's challenging, you know. I remember when we were unpacking at the first place, I was like, okay, mom, you got eight glasses. You got to only keep four of them. And she's like, oh my gosh. I mean, because even though you downsize, when you get there, you realize you got to downsize a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, good times. And, and just, you know, I would go over before that about once a week and pack things up and, you know, just get the process started and, mm -hmm. and just take little bits of time here and there. I set my own schedule so I can do that. And so that worked out really well. Good. And was that your first experience with helping someone downsize? Well, in theory, yes, it was my, it was my first experience. But then in the, in the middle of her, after she got moved into her first apartment, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, her sister passed away from a stroke. And her sister never married or had kids and lived in Denver, Colorado. So we spent, and, and my aunt did live for a few months. And so we spent quite a few months back and forth. And then once she passed, we went there and we completely, we had to get rid of everything. We mm -hmm. had an estate sale. We cleaned the house out. That was almost a bigger project than with my mom. Yeah, because you had so, to do everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And so, and then my husband and I actually recently downsized too. So I've had a lot of experience with this. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good, a lot of recent experience. Yes, that. oh yes. So what caused you and your husband to downsize? Well, some of it was after watching my mom and, and then going through that with my aunt. And the biggest thing really was 
my washer and dryer was in the basement mm -hmm. and I was just tired of climbing the stairs. My kids were grown and like, I want to want to get to where I have all one level mm -hmm. um, while I'm still young enough to just get all that done and I don't have to worry about it later. And um, so going to one level, it just ended up being a smaller place. That was just part of it. And how do you feel now for yourself after making a downsize move? Oh yeah, it's so much nicer. And we probably still have more stuff than we need, mm -hmm. but it's so nice to have less space to take care of. Mm -hmm. So nice to have less to deal with, you know, stuff wise. And you know, we just don't need all this stuff that we think we do sometimes. Does she seem a lot happier than what you think she would have been if she oh, was? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, just imagine living by yourself. And I mean, we, we see her as often as we can, but we've still got our own lives and our own jobs and our own everything. And so she's got this whole group of friends now at her community mm -hmm. that she can hang out with and do whatever she wants to. And I'll come over and she'll be like, I'm not playing cards. If you need anything, let me know. I'm like, no, mom, it's fine. So yeah, she has her own, she has her own thing to do. It's great. That's good. Were you ever worried that maybe you'd help convince her to make this move and she wouldn't like it or she'd have trouble making friends? No. I mean, in my particular case, no, because my mom doesn't have any trouble making friends. <laughs> and so I didn't really, yeah, and I don't convince her to do anything. I mean, you know, we strongly suggest, but she she has her own mind and she does what she wants. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and that's what the show's all about, is empowering seniors to make their own decisions. Yes. And, and uh, that's totally it, what we believe. Yes. In fact, when we made the second move, when she wasn't happy at the other place for different reasons, um, she's the one that made all the phone calls. And I got to pick her up. I went to pick her up one day and she said, we're going to go to this place and we need to see, we need to call Kelsey. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I called Kelsey and Kelsey said, come on by. So, I mean, I didn't even know we were doing this. <laughs> And we did it. So yeah, that was pretty cool too. Cause yeah. she, she said, I'm doing this. I want to move. This is not working. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not unusual for people to move into one place and then maybe make a decision to move somewhere else. I've actually heard that now that I'm, that I, you know, before you delve into this whole senior living thing, you don't really know, mm -hmm. but it's just like anything else. You learn lots as you go. I think too, it probably gives you a lot to think about and do just the whole process of it. I think in a way that's kind of healthy too. Oh yes. And like I said, thinking about our own stuff and downsizing mm -hmm. our own stuff because of it. Mm -hmm. And allowing yourself to let go of things and to, to dream a new dream and have a fresh start. Yes. A fresh start at any age. Absolutely. Absolutely. So have you found the people at the community that are leasing and operating it to be helpful? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I mentioned Kelsey earlier. She's been very, very helpful, very that's, helpful. That's true. And the whole staff is helpful. And, and if mom needs anything, like she's on a special diet, she's got celiac. And so when the chef found out that she had celiac, he came over and he's like, I'll cook whatever you want. You know, yeah. They're just, they're wonderful. Awesome. So it sounds like Kelsey was a big help and I bet she might have some good help for our viewers as well. Yes. So let's meet Kelsey. We're here with Kelsey to find out about senior living options. Kelsey, welcome to Empowering Seniors. Thanks for having me. You work in a senior living community. So you're meeting families that come check out the place and they're getting their bearings. Yes. So how often do you have maybe a daughter or family member come check it out first? It's probably half and half. Um, with independent living, you're going to hear from um, the family members first or you're going to hear from the actual prospect or the, the potential resident. A lot of times though, I'm working with the daughter and she'll look at the community first um, and really scope out, um, find if it tailors to her needs. And then she will say, okay, I love it, but I want to make sure mom or dad loves it. So I want to bring them back. Vice versa, you might have mom and dad come in and say, I love it here, but I really want my family to come and look at it. Um, I want to make sure that they love it just as much as I do to help me make this decision because it can be a big decision. I mean, downsizing from a home or somewhere like a, a um, duplex or something like that, it can be a big decision moving to a, a, an independent living community. So um, a lot of time having that family support is what really works out best for me too because I can do some more discovery, find out what they want and what the family wants as well. What about the seniors that maybe don't have family uh, that are local or around to help them? Right, and that happens as well. So a lot of times if that's happening, um, I love to reach out to the other community partners and experts in this field to help me um, make sure and drive this whole 
um, process and make it go smoothly because again it's a big decision and when it's just you and you don't have someone else to support you mm -hmm. having community experts on your side is what you're gonna want so what are some of the stumbling blocks that people have when they're making a decision a main one is oh, I don't want to leave my home I've lived here for so many years I don't know if I can downsize it's just so little with moving from a home you have to sell your home and then move into a community so it's not just as smooth a transition as they would like it to be. So what are some of your suggestions sometimes to help get going? To get going, I always say just make that first call um, and, and follow up around a, diff, a bunch of variety of communities because mm -hmm. there are so many um, independent livings around this, uh, around Wichita area is all I can speak for, but that have different needs and different things that they will enjoy. So shopping each um, community and being able to find out what fits your needs the best is what I always suggest. And tour them too. Go actually look at them. If you can't physically go in them, ask for a video or I mean because I know there's FaceTime all different ways to be able to connect mm -hmm. because I believe that being able to go in somewhere and feel the culture is a very important part of, of moving into a community. What's some of your most important advice for anyone in Kansas or wherever watching the show that's thinking about these things? What's some advice that you would give? I would always say just start the process early because it, it could be a long process. I mean, you are you might want to take your time and being able to choose your own community first will take time off of your family's life and it will keep you healthy. Being able to make those decisions and um, you know, I just really encourage people to call and just start start the process. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's scary, but getting all that information is the most important thing. And it can be a long time. That's okay. We like to we like to talk with you for years. It's fine. Whatever you need. <laughs> well, it sounds like it'd be just fun to to go around and visit different communities mm -hmm. and gather that information. Yeah, eat lunch there. Um, go join an activity. Um, make sure that you tell anyone in the community what you like, so they can make sure and invite you to these things. I mean, you are just as much as part of the community. If you're not living there, if you are, because we want, always encourage people to come in. It's well, important. That's nice so they can kind of test drive and yeah, meet people. Yeah, come live with us for a little bit, a day in the life. <laughs> Good. So they can meet some of the people that mm -hmm. live there and they can imagine what it's like and talk to people and exactly. find out from them. And I always encourage you to maybe meet a resident or two as well, because then you can really get their perspective as mm -hmm. well. What do you think is the benefit of making the move first? Move, Go ahead, move into your mm -hmm. apartment. And how does that help? It, so to me, and I think what I've gathered from everyone else who has done that is that it makes it less stressful. Um, you can take what you want because usually there's a lot of stuff that you have that you've accumulated over these years. Mm -hmm. um, so you find what's most important to you and you work with the real estate agent, you work with a downsizing agent, you work with an estate sale um, because they're going to be able to help you through that choosing and, and encourage you what to bring and how to get it all arranged. And it's kind of exciting, I feel like, because you're going to to decorate a whole new empty canvas and we always say make it your own you know put up pictures on the wall do whatever you want make it feel like home to you and then that makes it less stressful and easier on you what have you observed about people that have made the move and moved in maybe people that were excited about it ahead of time or people that weren't as excited what do you see once they get here I see people thrive and I always say that you have to come here and feel the culture um, because that will change your perception of it. It's so easy to see, um, you know, a digital flyer or a piece of paper and make your decision and what you think about what a community is, but when you actually go in and you meet management and you see the meals that are being um, served and you see the residents being happy and having fun activities and you learn about all the things that, that all these places provide, you will be like, wow, where have I been? Why have I not gone here yet? Because um, all that any senior living community wants to do is help you live a better life and give you the resources to have um, whatever you need, really. Kelsey, thank you so much. That was very helpful. And now let's get back to our other conversation. Today we're talking about downsizing into apartment living, and I'm sitting here with Nadine Deerdorf. Nadine, welcome to Empowering Seniors. Thank you. So you're really in the middle of a downsizing move. Yesterday yes. was moving day. Yes. Today resettle. It looks beautiful. Thank you. And so tell us a little bit about uh, your your story. How long were you in your last home? Well, I was in my last home about 35 years. 
Maybe, maybe 30, 30 to 35 sometime. I hated to leave, but um, my husband had died some time ago and I was getting tired of all the maintenance and all the things I had to do that I didn't know how to do. <laughs> so I decided to look into uh, downsizing and going to an apartment. How long were you kind of considering making a downsizing move? About eight years. About eight years, <laughs> okay. It and took, it took me a long time to... In the last two or three years, what are some of the things that you did to kind of prepare to make the move? Well, I started sorting a little bit because you collect so many things over the years. So I sorted things and gave it away or whatever, you know, and, and that was hard, you know, but that's what you have to do. You considered moving out of state to be near your daughter mm -hmm. in California. Mm -hmm. And how long were you visiting in California? Well, my last visit was, I was there uh, about four and a half months. Wow. <laughs> it was a long time because I got caught up in the COVID. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get home. So uh, then when I got home, I really got started in leaving and moving mm -hmm. <laughs> and decided to stay in Wichita. What caused you to decide to stay here? I think it was just all my friends, my church, and... Uh, my neighbors, I don't, it was just a lot of things. Um, my doctors, and uh, I mean, the more people you know, the more connections you have with so many things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just decided to stay here. You probably had a lot of choices where you could go. Mm -hmm. And why did you pick this apartment? Well, it's close to where I live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know the area a lot. Mm -hmm. um, my bank is closed, the grocery store is closed, and I might not be driving too much longer, so I'm just kind of in the middle of a lot of things that I like. Mm -hmm. And you have friends that live here already? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Yeah. I understand that you did not get to see your apartment. No, too I early. did this all on the phone from California. <laughs> so you, you basically leased your apartment while you're still in California and they told you there would be a nice view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they told me all about it and told me the square footage and um, that I had a nice view to the lake. And I thought, and I wanted on the main floor. I didn't want any stairs. Mm -hmm. And she just happened to have that that day. She said, you're lucky, you just happened to have what you want. Were you surprised at the view when you got to see it? Oh, yeah. It's I, just it's beautiful. It's amazing. Just beautiful. And how was moving day for you yesterday? Well, it was very interesting. <laughs> everything, of course, everything was new to me. I'd, I'd never been, well, I'd moved several times, but I had a husband at the time, so I really never had to do anything. Mm -hmm. He did all the decisions and everything. And I just kind of, you know, but it was very interesting. And, uh, but yet it was kind of fun, you know. Once you get your stuff in, it feels more like home. And, mm -hmm. and they got it all done. and in uh, about five hours. Because so you had professional move managers. Had, yes, very good. Oh yes, and of course I couldn't have done it without the girls. Were you surprised how quickly everything got put away oh, yeah. and settled? All the boxes are gone and you just yep. arrived yesterday this is, afternoon. This is the next day and um, I had very few boxes around. They've just unloaded everything. When you were thinking about making a move for eight years, did the thought of going through everything in the house and actually physically moving and getting rid of all the extra stuff, how, how much do you think that slowed you down? Well, that slowed me down considerably because I didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what to do. So that's why it took me eight years to figure out <laughs> that I was gonna leave. During the eight years you were contemplating the move, did you imagine how easy it could be? Oh, heavens no. I had no idea. That's why I couldn't move forward because I knew it was too big a job. So you were stuck, me. okay. So you felt stuck there, just too overwhelming. So I'd, I'll think about that tomorrow. <laughs> and then your neighbor helped you find professionals to right. get it done. Right, I had no idea that there was such a thing around. Mm -hmm. And your helpers, how long did they spend before move day helping you get ready? Yeah, they were in and out and yeah, it's probably weird too. Since you didn't have family around or people volunteering to help, you had professionals to help you mm -hmm. that helped you think through 
what to keep and right. and so forth and just pull everything out. They were, yes, very good about sorting with me. Mm -hmm. And all I had to do was say, no, I don't want this. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. They sold some things for you mm -hmm. on, on uh, the internet. Right. And they have other things going into an estate sale. Mm -hmm. And they helped you get everything here and unpacked in less than 24 hours. Oh, yeah. So. It was unbelievable. And my daughter was so happy <laughs> in California because mm -hmm. she couldn't be here to help. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So do you think if more people knew about those types of services that it would be easier to oh. not stress and be worried about something for yes. so many years? Yes. Um, and I had, had mentioned before that I had been talking with my friend in Texas, mm -hmm. and she was so impressed with this whole thing, and she said, oh, I wonder if I can find somebody like this in Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, you got your move done. What do you think you'll enjoy about apartment living? Well, meeting new friends, and I've already met three or four new ones, and it's just been delightful. It probably makes it more fun just having that kind of view. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> and getting exactly what you wanted. <laughs> Nadine, to save someone maybe eight years of stress and worry, where would you tell them to start? Well, I think you need to, to look into where you want to go first. Uh, and, and, and when you're there, what part of town you want to go to, if you want to you know, hang around where you live now. or So has you gathered more information and found out what services were available and what types of apartments were available? Did that make it easier for you to decide? Well, yeah, it did. And of course, and I knew people here. And I, and my mother-in-law had lived here 50 years ago. So I knew all about uh, this area. And, and I've always lived in this area. Nadine, thank you so much. And I'm glad you're getting settled in. And <laughs> I you. hope it's everything that you wanted it to be. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Empowering Seniors. If you have questions or suggestions on any of the topics that we cover, you can reach out to me at empoweringseniors at kpts.org or give me a call at 316-686-4500. Until next time, I'm Katherine Ambrose, and this is Empowering Seniors. This program is made possible by American Senior Benefits Wichita is all about your peace of mind. We specialize in asset protecting, safeguarding your health, planning your estate, and preserving your freedom of choice. We're here to work through all of this with you. American Senior Benefits Wichita proudly supports PBS Kansas. The Candle Club, a place where friends, food, and music come together. Currently, we offer live entertainment every night except Sundays. Enjoy our delicious specialty appetizers and the Candle Club Signature Prime Rib. More about upcoming events at CandleClubWichita.com. Home Health and Hospice of Kansas is a locally owned and community-based provider. We offer quality health care to our patients and families complete with love, warmth, and compassion. We'll take care of all of the details for you. More information at KansasHomeHealth.com. Welcome to Cedric Plaza Retirement Community. Our living options are designed to suit your specific needs and activities that you're sure to love. We believe you'll be able to see yourself here enjoying time with friends and family. For more information, cedricplaza.org.